All right, everyone, welcome back to welcome back to episode eighty one, the revised edition. <laughs> you guys are getting two for the price of one on episode number eighty one. I'm gonna tell you right now. Look, man, I, I released an episode yesterday, episode eighty one. It was titled "The Poor Person's Mentality," and I go back and I listen to this episode and I, I realized that I was speaking from a point of frustration. And it's not that it's not that a lot of the, the, the principles and the things that I was talking about were untrue. It's just I was coming from a place of frustration, right? Which is exactly what we don't do. Which is exactly, you know, and, yeah. and if you guys are going to follow me, Blake, any of us, you're going to realize that we're flawed humans just like anybody else. And uh, and I own that 100%. So what, what I've decided to do is to recalibrate my perspective on those topics that we discussed in episode 81. About a thousand of you guys have that episode because you downloaded it. So you'll be able to go back. And the, and the thing about it is, too, a lot of the things that we talked about in that original comms check when it was, you know, just me, again, in a frustrated state trying to portray this information to you guys, a lot of the things I think could have been taken in a way that would tear some people down, and that's not what I'm here to do, right? I'm not. I'm not here to tickle everybody's ears. And I'm not here to. I'm not saying that everything that I always say is going to be agreeable, but I'm also not here to tear anyone down in any way, shape, or form. Um. So that's why we're on here to talk about this, the revised edition. This was the scheduled day. It was supposed to happen anyways. I oh, think yeah. Chad got a little bit anxious. I, well, I, no, I was frustrated yesterday, man, you know, because I had it in, I had this, I had something, I had some things on my heart that I needed to get off. I was frustrated. I was frustrated that I was here by myself, to be honest with you. Totally. I didn't want to wait till today. Yeah. And y'all, dude, I got to have, sometimes. I don't, y'all, look, we're about to release uh, a series of episodes called The Origins, and it's with me and Brooke, and it's going back and to, to the very beginning uh, of my adult life and working through stories that you guys have never heard, or maybe digging deeper into stories that I've only scratched the surface on before. So that series of episodes is coming. It'll start next week. And you guys are going to realize, I think, maybe give you a little better understanding of who I actually am and where I came from and, and why I get so fired up and so passionate about some things. Uh, because I've, I've come through some mess, son. And... Man, sometimes I got to get reeled in, son. I mean, I got, I got, I'm blessed, man. I got people in my life that'll reel me in. Cause I, sometimes, son, I'll get, I'll get slammed off the, I'll get slammed off the map. Go off the res. I'm like a pit bull, dude. I mean, you cut me loose sometimes, and sometimes you got to put me back on the leash. Right? That's right. And hey, Kill I'm, dog. I'm cool with that. That's just, Whatever you can at, at sometimes it's a strength, sometimes it's a weakness. He's got to have a handler. I got to have a handler, man. <laughs> and I got a little bit, I got a little bit too wound up yesterday. <laughs> well, I think this stuff is uh, has become somewhat of a therapy for you too. I, I mean, that, that's why it's so good. You get on here and you can get this stuff out, you know. But and well, that's what you did yesterday was get it out. Well, yeah, it, it it really has, and I was talking to Brooke about that yesterday when we were recording the uh, the origins episode of how uh, we were working through deep work, you know, deeply through some of these stories, man. I mean, you know, stuff that you'll remember, but that I've never told to you guys. And I said, man, this is this is hard, 
you know, but it's good. It's it's really good. And and here's the thing too, um, it, I, I care so much about you guys who listen to this. If I didn't care about you guys, if we didn't care about you guys, we would have just left the the original conversation up. Yeah. And said, screw it. You know, obviously some people are going to love this. Some people are going to take it the wrong way. And uh, and it's it's not going to be good for them. And, you know, but but we, li- we literally care so much about everyone that tunes into this show. That's why we've taken the time to come in here and just, you know. And it's a perfect opportunity also to show you, I hope you see that we're serious about owning mistakes that we make that we are flawed human beings um and we're doing the best that we can uh to give you guys truth right truth spoken in love um and, and we're that, we're weak you know you a verse here that i wanted to read is second corinthians well it's in second corinthians 12 verse 9 and it says but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. Mm. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. Come on. We're, we're weak humans. We're weak just like everybody else. Yeah. And we're going to boast in it because that's where you're powerful. Yep. Not, and not to mention that, uh, uh, or another point, is I, I really believe that we... But me, as an individual, I'll be held accountable for everything that we that I that I put out here, uh, right? Because God's given me this platform, if you want to call it that. Uh, God's given me this uh, podcast, and I'm I'm gonna be held accountable for the yeah. things that I say, and the way the things that I say affect the people, the the way that they affect the people that listen to it. Yep. And I take that very seriously, man. Like, very seriously. So, hey, man, uh, look, we could end the episode right there. I seven, We're seven minutes in. Hey, this thing can run long <laughs> as it needs to. We ain't got to cap it. But anyways, yeah, we'll, we'll go back over some of these points that we talked about on episode, um, the, the original episode 81. And it started with that poor person mentality. What that is, guys, to me, what that is to me, it's this mindset that you see, you'll see it in a lot of people, it's this mindset that there's never going to be enough and there's nothing that you can do about it, right? So in other words, you're stuck in this perpetual uh, cycle in life where where you you're you're always afraid that there's never going to be enough next week, next month, next year. So you don't ever do the things you want to do. You don't ever have the things you want to have. Uh, you don't experience life to the fullest. You don't enjoy the fruits of your labor because you're just trying to cling to what you do have because you're afraid that there won't that that you won't have enough in the future, and that. That perpetual mindset will literally keep you in the hole for your entire life if you don't break free from that. So that's what I mean by that. And it's very, very prevalent in especially the areas that we live in. You know, a lot of people that I grew up around had that mindset. And it's it's kept them, it's kept them in a and not a good place, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, where did this come from? This came from a scenario where I I purchased something that I really wanted to have, and a lot of the people around me were actually able to pull me in, pull me back into that poor person mindset. The people around me. Literally pulls, they pull me back into this mindset where I'm thinking, this ain't like me, man. I'm thinking, man, maybe there isn't enough. Maybe there's not going to be enough to, maybe I shouldn't have done this, right? That's where I was. That's what I was frustrated about. That's where that frustration was come from because that's not me. 
But what you'll see is misery loves company. People that are stuck in that perpetual mindset want to pull you into that hole with them, right? Because it makes them feel good about being in that mindset if everyone around them thinks that way. At that point, then they think there's nothing wrong with thinking that way. So it really didn't make me feel good when people were pulling me in. Look, man, I've told you guys, this is this is as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, it is easy to make more money if you are willing to put in the work. The work is the is the hard part, right? The making the money is easy. The work is the hard part that most people aren't willing to do. The work, by the work, I mean it doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter what time it is. It, 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 it has to be high, high, high on your priority list to put in the work. And that's what stops most people, right? Now, there's some of the things that I that some some of you guys might think when I talk about this entrepreneurship mindset, that's just one that's just one road in life that an individual can take. If you're not an entrepreneur and you are working in a job that you're happy with, that's fulfilling you, that's providing for you sufficiently and you feel rewarded by the work that you're doing, there is nothing wrong with working for someone else. I want to go ahead and let you guys know, in case you ever hear me, when I get in that entrepreneurship mindset and I'm talking about directing the conversation toward that lifestyle, I'm not putting down people that have a job. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's two. Well, then there's probably more than two, but you know, I, I feel like some people have a, a leader's heart or a leader's personality, and some people have a servant's personality. And, I mean, and you, and you can have kind of a little bit of each one sometimes, right? But if you have a servant's heart, there's nothing wrong with working for someone else to grow their business, to serve them. And the thing Chad's getting at here is is to have the right mindset about it, to have the right approach and not – be, oh, woe is me, I'm stuck in this rut, I'm working this job day to day, there's never going to be enough. If there's not enough where you're working, do something about it and go serve another company in a different way and don't get stuck in that rut, right? Oh, yeah, it, that's, exactly, that's exactly right. This can apply to both lifestyles. Now, specifically, how does this ap- apply to the entrepreneur? For me personally, So if you're an entrepreneur and you're out there, you're hanging it out there, you're taking the risk, you're running your own business, you're going to, you're going to have people. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. You're going to have people in your life that don't understand the path that you've chosen. They don't understand this, this reality that you can make more money, uh, if you if you put in the work, they don't understand the relationship between money making money and putting in the work in that entrepreneurship space, and they and they're going to try again to drag you into this poor person mentality. And what'll happen is if you're an entrepreneur, I've felt this pressure. I have felt this pressure because it's scary owning a business, man. You don't know how the customer's going to respond to your product. You don't know what's going to be in the bank next week. Yep. Next month, you don't ever know that, right? Until unless you have some massive company, which I'm talking about startups like Three or Seven Project specifically, because that's my only experience. Yep. Um, so when when these people start to try to pull you down, and you're in that entrepreneurship space, it's it's gonna look really enticing to abandon ship. That's the first thing that pops into your head. It's popped into my head before. When things might get a little tight, right? And people start saying, well, you better you better start saving all your money up for because hard times are coming. How many times have y'all heard hard times are coming? How, oh, I hard hear Hard times that. are here. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, mean it, life is a hard time. That's right. To to be a human, to be part of a, of this 
earth and be a living human on earth is to be in a constant state of undulation, right? Going up and down. But anyways, freaking people don't understand what you're doing. And then the the most enticing option that's going to pop in your head is, dang, I just need to go get a job with somebody else to have some security, right? Because that's what those people in that mindset, that poor person mindset, they're going to that's what they're leaning toward is that just it's it's a false sense of security right but it's easy to say man i'm just gonna quit what i'm doing within within my own business and go out and get a job and that's not the right decision it's like stay the course man yeah and if hard times are coming come up with a new idea come up with a new product make the product that you have better Right? Put in the work to execute it, and you're going to be back on your feet. Yeah. It's, this, is a, this is a long game, right? So that's the dynamic in that entrepreneurship space. That's how this poor person mindset relates to the entrepreneur. It's nothing against anybody having a job working for somebody else. All right? I'm just talking about my specific experience because I've had that thought. People in my life have made me think sometimes, man, I just need to, I just need to stop. I just need to stop doing this and go get a job. It's really enticing. Yeah, and I think a lot of it too goes back to being uh, faithful and responsible with with what you have, and that looks different for everybody, right? So you know, some people. If you're if you're ta- asking somebody about a purchase that you made, if you're asking someone that is not on in the same level or same realm as you, then their advice is going to be based off of where they're at. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think I think that just goes back to being who you are, knowing what you've got, and staying the course. It, it mm-hmm. you know trust yourself. I mean, obviously, first you got to. I mean, you should seek God and everything. And trust the decision that you're making. We talked yesterday about, you know, what we put out. As long as it's backed up by Scripture and the intents with love, then roll with it. And if and that's the same in our decisions every day, right? If if what you're doing is is out of love and it is backed up by the Scripture, you can roll with it. And it does. You don't have to seek advice on it. Agreed, man. And and by no means, you know, going back to my own personal circumstance, I'll tell you guys what I bought. I didn't tell you guys what I bought on the last episode. I bought a seven thousand dollar thermal optic, thermal optic. Yeah, it's bad to the bone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, I'm not saying to be unresponsible. No. I I just made unresponsible a word. I know y'all don't like that, but I'm making unresponsible a word. It's almost unresponsible to say unresponsible. Yeah, but y'all freaking deal with that. <laughs> um, I'm not saying to be unresponsible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, <clears throat> I'm saying, I'm saying, enjoy life and don't be stuck in that poor person mindset. Now, the the whole second part of this episode can be summed up in pretty much one sentence. I don't have much faith in American currency. I would rather, right now, instead of stack a bunch of cash in the bank, I would rather spend my money on experiences, on training, and then, after I've had the training on equipment that empowers me and enables me to live, survive, and thrive in any scenario that life can throw at me. Mm-hmm. I think that those things, experience, training, and equipment, in that order, I think those things are much more valuable than... American currency. Yeah. Why do I say that? I won't go too far down this rabbit hole, but our country is $27 trillion in debt. 
the uh, our currency is literally worth nothing. It has no actual value. That's why it's called currency and not money. It's not backed by anything. Right. So, it's not unresponsible to go if you have some extra. If you have some extra, it's not unresponsible to go and use that extra to invest in some training, to invest in some skills, to invest in some experience, because those are things that have actual value and that no one can take from you. And they, they empower you. They give you a new sense of freedom. They actually cancel out anxiety. If you will go out, and I invested a lot of time, my life, in training, right? Now I'm spending the money on the equipment. All right, if you will go out and, and, get, and, and have some experiences that empower you, it'll give you a, a new sense of freedom as a human being. And you can't even put a price tag on those things, right? That's right. It's because, I'm going to read another verse to you guys, but this is uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And you can look at that in a couple ways, but you know, one of the ways is you look at training and experiences I know what this verse is talking about, but those two things are also unseen, and it it builds you as a person and makes you more effective in every every other area of your life, building up other people, not only secure for your own your own self in the event of a catastrophe or whatever happens, but it gives you confidence, it gives you a, a bigger self esteem, and in turn makes you more effective to go out and do whatever it is you're doing. And, and here's a few scriptures that help me break free from the poor person's mentality. Here's a few. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Um, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, nor what you eat or drink, nor about your body or what you wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than they? Here we go. Old Testament. Um, oh, man. I didn't have... I, I marked this one wrong. Basically says everything on earth is belongs to God. The cattle on a thousand hills, every bird of the air, every beast of the land belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. In Philippians chapter 4, it says, And my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. These are some scriptural things that, should help you break free from that perpetual poor person mentality, right? You actually serve a God that gives according to his riches. He does not give to you from his riches. I want you guys to understand this. Like, when God supplies for the needs of his children... He supplies for the needs of his warriors. If you're on a mission serving him, he's going to supply you your needs. What are your needs? Food, water, shelter. You're not going to get a freaking jet or a fancy car unless for some reason he decides you need that. All right? He's going to supply for your needs. He supplies according to, not from. When he supplies us, it doesn't mean it takes away from his riches, it's according to his riches. The best way I can describe this, if you're writing a word, if you use a letter from the alphabet, that letter isn't taken from away from the alphabet, right? It's you, you write a letter according to the alphabet. Just because you use a letter, it's not taking it out of the alphabet. You can use it again. It's, it's according to, and this is the way God provides for us. It's, it's, in, it's inexhaustible. It's never going to run out. It's not yeah. even a possibility. It's according to his riches. 
And that's the that's the ultimate equalizer. A servant who's serving a company versus an entrepreneur who's leading. That that's the equalizer. They all have the same amount. Like one guy might have some more possessions, but what's the Bible tell us? Don't build up your possessions where moth and rust destroy, but build them up in heaven, right? So, I mean, yeah, if you want to build that stuff up, you got the extra money, you want to go get it, go get it. But all your needs are going to be met whether you're doing this or whether you're doing this as long as you're seeking God and fulfilling your will or his will in your life. I mean, to me, that's the equalizer. There's, it, we, we all are going to have our needs met if we are serving God. Yeah, yeah. And, you, you, and I think that that's a really good point. It's, it's, so, it's so satisfying to know that you are, are in a place where you are fulfilling God's mission for your life. And, and I understand a lot of people say, well, I don't know what God's mission for my life is. Well, it's pretty easy. You can read it in the book. You know, it, it's, it's literally being, being a companion yep. uh, for God and then also sharing the message of Jesus with other people. That's a clearly defined mission yep. that, that we all have that is the basis of our mission. It's the, it's the, should be the foundation of every mission that we have as servants. Let me share this story. I, I don't even I probably haven't even told you this story, but probably I don't know, maybe two years ago, it just during prayer one day, I really felt like God had told me that I was going to be in some full time ministry at some point. And of course I was anxious for it. And and it was to the point that I even called up our pastor. I said, Hey, let's sit down and meet and see what this looks like. Because in my mind I thought Okay, well, it, it's probably going to fit somewhere in the church I'm going. And I'll probably work for the church. And it didn't work out. You know, nothing nothing really was there. Nothing was open. So I just rocked on about my business and, and thought about it from time to time. But, you know, I was looking for opportunities. But nothing really popped up. Nothing worked. So I just kept kind of doing my thing. And just probably a week ago, I mean, if, if you don't know on here, I'm about to go full-time with 37 at the end of the month. And... um. So just a couple weeks ago in prayer, I was uh, just just praying. I mean, nothing specifically, and it just all of a sudden popped in my head, and God told me, hey, you remember when I told you that uh, that you were going to be in full-time ministry? Well, here it is. Now, now it's coming up. And to me, that was just powerful because... It was something that I'd wanted uh, really bad at the time, you know, when I when I he had first told me that, and then all this time for some reason it hasn't been that evident to me. But that's what this is. I mean, that's that's what I'm doing is going into a full time ministry here to help other people to spread the gospel and do what he's called me to do, and that just goes back to staying the course, right? Had I pushed the issue and just kept going and and I mean, I could have forced it. I'm, I could have found something that I could have considered full-time ministry, right? But it wouldn't have been what he had for me. And I don't know. I just felt like I needed to share that story. I had, I think I told Jeff Forrester on the phone the other day. I was talking to him, but uh, we'll probably talk about a little bit about that story tonight on Resurrected. No, that's awesome, man. Um, Hang on, I was gonna freaking say something about that, and it slipped my freaking mind. Uh, all right, yeah. So there's the revised edition of episode eighty-one, the poor person's mindset. Um, that's that's really all I got, man. It's really covering, it's really covering everything that I covered yesterday. But essentially coming at it from a more logical angle and perspective instead of from an emotional, frustrated, right? Frustration, that emotion, instead of coming at it from an emotional standpoint. And it was born out of poor, everyone thinks money. And that's where it was born out of, but it's so much more than just money, right? I mean, the, the, you can be poor in so many other things other than money, and this same principle can apply to every every other whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. The freaking put in the work, man. Yep. If, just like Blake said, whether, you, whether you're working 
for somebody or you're working for yourself, the work is the equation that makes the difference. And it's what's going to set you apart. It really is because there's so few people that are willing to put that work in in order to get out of that mindset that there's never going to be enough. And and it's it's not even... You don't break, I don't break out of that mindset of there's never going to be enough by having a stack of cash somewhere. That, that doesn't give, be, by, by having a large savings account, that's not what helps me break free of that there's no. never going to be enough mindset. It's just the realization that if I'm willing to do the work, I can make more money. It's faith. It, it doesn't yeah. even have to do with money. It it's it, it's faith that God will supply your needs. Yeah, that's all it is. You know the um, yeah, He'll supply your needs. But now you you still have free will, and that's where the oh, work yeah. comes into play. Yeah, you right? got to do. I've, I've heard it said before that you know the verse said that God provides um, basically uh, food for the birds. And yeah, I just it, read that. Yeah, so. But he doesn't shove it down their throat, right? They got to fly gotta go around find and find it. it. Yeah. It's out there, and he's going to provide it if they'll if they'll go find it. And we're, we're the it. same. That's it, man. That's a perfect dynamic. All right, guys, don't be unresponsible. <laughs> Share this episode. Share this episode with somebody that you think it'll help. Share it on social media. Drop us a review or something on. If you're listening to this on an iPhone, give us a, a review on iTunes. We would appreciate that. That's all I got for this Sunday morning. Get busy. If y'all got the 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 uh, first episode of this conversation already downloaded, God bless you. That's limited edition. <laughs> I may release it again for you guys. Love you guys. Enough said. <laughs>